Hello and a very good evening, afternoon or even morning to all of you watching us from across the world here at Weon and on an Weon exclusive. We are joined today by the leader of the United National Party as well as former Prime Minister Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe. Good evening Mr. Vikramasinghe. Evening, my pleasure to be with you all. Getting right into it, mm. as we speak, the mm. country's economy has been at its worst since mm. post-independence. However, the present government is saying that this has been a crisis in the making, including uh, during the regime of yours, when you were Prime Minister. What have you got to say to this? No, we've had problems from time to time. No, this crisis was not of the make, uh, was in the making earlier. Actually, uh, I don't want to go too much in the past of what happened before us, but we did have a problem in 2015, but uh, of the debt repayment, but by 2017, we had a surplus in the primary budget. First time we had after about 60 years. And we are building up on it. Despite the problems of 2019, we didn't do too badly. We did have a uh, gain. Uh, we, we went back on it, but that was due to the bomb XP blast. And we picked up in the next six months. So this is not where the problem began. The problem began, firstly, the government reduced the VAT. Our budgetary position improved because we had to increase VAT. So by reducing VAT, what they have done was they deprived the uh, coffers of the revenue that was needed to maintain a surplus. Right. Uh, secondly, we were quite unprepared for the COVID. We had to understand with COVID that our, uh, that our uh, foreign exchange earnings will go down. Uh, and we should have prepared for it. And we should have gone to the IMF and spoken with them and got the program back on track. We're just about finishing our program. We didn't do that. And uh, we just carried on. So gradually, I don't know from where they thought they were getting the money. They seem to have been under the impression that people, countries are going to come and give us money for foreign exchange. So now we've uh, virtually exhausted what was there. And if we had spoken with the IMF, there was $400 million that was given uh, in the first year. We, I don't think we took that. But and, uh, why do you think hmm. the present government is so hesitant and at times even adamant to go to the IMF? They, I don't know. They have some misconceptions about IMF that they will want government the employees uh, reduced, which is not the case. IMF will not want it reduced. I, I've spoken with the IMF, with the World Bank, and I think they'll form a consortium to help Sri Lanka out. But uh, they won't go to the IMF. Basically, the people who got and formed this Vyatmagar, uh, people who were against reform, against restructuring, against opening out, against dealing with India or most of the other, against MCC, they were all people who didn't want something done. So now we are paying the price of for that. As we speak, also mm. Sri Lanka's forex reserves are at mm. dire straits yes. and the government has sort of resorted to extreme moves from mm. selling half of its gold reserves to converting mm. forex mm. services and goods that mm. you know people earn here in Sri Lanka. Are they really doing the right thing? They are not. We have some fundamental issues which we have to address now. And if you don't address it, this will not uh, suffice. For instance, you have the question of the our foreign exchange reserve. Then we have the whole question of the fall in revenue, I think about a trillion dollar, trillion rupee gap. Then you must also remember the issues that as this goes along, we, we in the long term, we have two issues. One is by 2035, we may not have money to pay the pensions for the government service. And you have to tackle it now. This is one reason you put in the economy in order so that we have the strength. Then what about the expenditure that's going to come on climate change? So all, all, all this will uh, basically uh, result, has resulted in a crisis which can't be just settled in a day or two. We have to go into it and we need a long-term solution. Moving on from the economic crisis to something to deal with the United National Party. Mm. Now, we all know that the UNP has suffered one of its mm. worst possible defeats mm. in the previous election from being a party that uh, gave us democratically mm. elected presidents mm. to just having one parliamentary mm. seat right now. Yeah. 
where do you think sort of the party lost its way and what is sort of the resolve and resurrection for the UNP in the future, in your opinion, as the leader? No, I think firstly, the party was not prepared for the 2019 presidential election. And uh, as far as I was concerned, I wanted everyone to be together in the party and contest the parliamentary elections because we may have had a chance of uh, making our mark felt in parliament and preventing them from getting two-thirds. But there was a feeling that Mr. Sajid Premadas and others, they wanted to go out there, given various reasons. I don't want to go into it. So when we went, we, we the party votes split. But if you analyze the votes, I don't think the two sections, if you look at the UNPs, we didn't get more than uh, 2 million UNP votes, both the SJB and the UNP. Uh, some other people seem to have moved, up, moved out of it. From 5.4 million, we came down to 2. Then after the COVID uh, has struck and this crisis, I think our, all our vote bases have disappeared, both of the government as well as ours. And we have to realize that we have to build up new vote bases. Uh, looking at the people, you can't only address your hardcore supporters. So we've looked at it, we've done a survey, we've known what the people's views are. We are uh, reorganizing the party as a more professional uh, party. And secondly, we are looking at new faces and young faces to come in. Because most of our seniors have either retired or has left us. So we, if we take young people who are committed and we can train them up. I think that's the best option. So you could see in the coming few months uh, some of the new faces that will come out. So when will you hand over the reins of party leadership to most likely a new face in the future? Whenever they are ready, I'll do that. And you think they're not ready yet? Well, they're just coming into the picture. We have about two, three, but there are a lot of others. I think we'll have about 15 or 20 people coming. So when they want it, they can have it. Moving on to matters of uh, international diplomacy, uh, Sri Lanka has always maintained this concept of a non-aligned foreign policy, which means it's often a hard task to balance countries like the US, China, India, and mm. even Russia. But as of recent, some are of the view that the present government favors China more than other countries, which might come at the cost of other countries writing off uh, Sri Lanka. Mm. Uh, what is your thought on this? No, the government went and cancelled uh, most of the agreements we had with other countries. The one was the oil tank farm, which now they have uh, restored. Then you have the two LNG plants, which are Japan and India. Uh, we had the central highway phase three and four, which are Japan again, again, India. We had the MCC. And there were other projects that's coming on, that came on. So there's about $4 billion worth of inv investments, including, I saw, I forgot, the East Terminal, which they have cancelled. That's one of the reasons that has, that's hit the economy. People have lost confidence. Uh, but I don't think, I don't know what the reason, I think it was mainly part of this Vyatmaga group who made these issues and got them cancelled. And the government should have at that time thought, Look, if we cancel them, there would be uh, problems with the donors. There was a LRT system. And now what they've done is one of the projects have been given to a Chinese company they've called for. But then they have also got into problems with the, from what I heard recently, one was on the fertilizer deal. But I am told that uh, some of the other projects also, there seems to be some issues there. So I, at, the, at the end of the day, I don't think we are friendly with anyone. Not even China? Well, you see, that's also under strain. Because of the fertilizer crisis as fertilizer well. Fertilizer crisis, there seems to be some other issues also. But the serious issue is not that it, it's, uh, at least the Chinese Prime Minister has come, so there is, they've been talking to them again. It's the breakdown of the relations with uh, India, uh, Japan, USA, uh, EU, and the West. So you, we've really broken down, and that's that's where, actually, if you look at our trade, our uh, balance of trade comes. If you look at our balance of trade, 
we have deficits with all the Asian countries, whether it be China, India, Japan, and then our surplus comes from the West. Now, when you annoy the West, what do you do? And then you get a surplus again from the Middle East. But beyond from South Asia onwards to East Asia, we are in deficit. Also, uh, the visit of the Chinese foreign minister mm. just recently, mm. uh, we came to know that China and Sri Lanka are in talks of um, debt restructuring, but we aren't really given details on how and when this might happen. According to your opinion, how will debt restructuring take place with China, given that they are one of our biggest lenders in the country? Will there be debt restructuring? What I have read is that there was a request for China to restructure debt. If China, if they restructure debt, it will have to be for a large number of countries on the Belt and Road Initiative. So I, I, I can't see a restructuring of the debt. Uh, so is it merely a false place. promise? It's a, it's a reference. It, uh, what I read was that, the, that we have raised this issue yes. with the Chinese. But do you believe that they will? I don't think there will be a restructuring of the debt. I, I don't think it's possible because you can't restructure the debt of one country and not of the others. So I don't think there will be. And the Chinese foreign minister's visit, I think that to, other than he came and spent the night, but he couldn't have spent more than four hours uh, having three meetings and this function that was uh, held. You were also in attendance at the port city? Yes, I went there because uh, the recognition of China was done by the first Prime Minister, D.S. Sennak, the founder of our party, I think it will after India we recognize. Then the, uh, the item that they have uh, celebrated is the rubberized deal which was done under the UNP government. So I went there and then the recognition also started after we got into the UN, but the government's changed, so Mr. Bandarnak was able to finalize it. So that, that's why I went, we, we, and they had mentioned to me also. Uh, when I could come, because we were, we had to tell the country that we are the ones who did the first deal. Right. Also, recently, the visit of Kui and Hong, China's uh, Sri Lanka envoy, to the ethically sensitive Tamil majority Jaffna Peninsula, um, sort of raised eyebrows across Indian shores. Uh, what is your take on this? Well, actually, the Chinese ambassadors, like others, have been travelling up to the north earlier. Uh, when I was PM, the Chinese ambassador would tell me once he came back from the north. Uh, I think uh, the events that happened there seems to have been the one that has uh, caused problems, issues in, in India. Specifically the point where they ask how far it is from here to India. Yeah. Do you think that was just a mere comment or was that more of an interest against I think it's a, I think it's a comment after all, they should know the distance between here and India. Right. Also, how much of um, India does Sri Lanka need and uh, how do you think the present government is handling India as a country and as an ally to Sri Lanka? Unless the 22 million of us take one portion of land and take this country out of this, uh, the South Asian, the Indian subcontinent, we and India have to live together. We had, uh, two sides of the same coin. In fact, our relations, culturally our relations with South India and Tamil Nadu is much stronger than Tamil Nadu's relations with uh, Delhi or half the Indian states. We deal with Kerala. So it, it's very, very strong views. We've been do business with uh, Mumbai, Delhi. It's, it's a cultural one. I mean, basically it's not something that uh, can be dealt uh, the way we do our relations with other other countries. Yeah. I suppose you can't stop Canada and USA even uh, having relations, though Canadians are quite different from the US politically and culturally. It's like that for two, th I mean, that's only about two, 300 years. These for about 2,000 years or more. We don't know. All we know is that we can trace it back is the Mohandajaru civilization. It could have been gone uh, much below, uh, longer than that. 
Also, um, especially like several countries mm. in the West, uh, mm. including European Union countries, mm. have sort of declared a, a diplomatic boycott of the uh, Beijing games uh, due to HR violations in mm. China. What do you think uh, Sri Lanka's stance should be on matters like this? I think Sri Lanka will take part. We took part in uh, the Moscow games when it was boycotted. We took part in the Los Angeles games when it was boycotted. So we will take part in uh, the Winter Olympics. Uh, I don't know who is going to compete in the Winter Olympics from Sri Lanka. But anyway, uh, there will be, I think, uh, represented by Sri Lanka, maybe more officials than participants, but that's the usual practice. Right. Also, uh, the pandemic has disrupted several activities here in the country. And do you think Sri Lanka, as the chair of the BIMSTEC, uh, should sort of um, convene the BIMSTEC right now? I should have wish, I, I felt we should have had some, at least some online uh, Zoom meetings among the heads of them and then at least got meetings at the certainly at the health minister level we haven't done that which it should have been done and also as we a had a wonderful opportunity on that and we didn't uh... right and also as a country in this region are we concerned enough of what's happening in myanmar right now and what is sri lanka's stance what do you think it should be well i raised this in parliament but i didn't get a reply and uh, I said we have to take it up. I didn't say to take it up uh, publicly, but what we do is to speak privately. I have had no reports about it, and the situation is more serious now that she has been uh, sentenced to four years of jail yes. for winning an election. So there has to be more pressure. So do you think uh, Sri Lanka, as the chair of the BIMSTEC, could sort of convene and do something in this regard? What is stopping Sri Lanka from convening the BIMSTEC? Well, there are a lot of questions like what is stopping them from going to the IMS, so I can't answer that question. <laughs> All right. Also, my final question. Anura Kumara Disanayaka, Sajid Premadasa, yeah. Gotabe Rajapaksa, Maitri Palasiri Sena, mm. and Ranil Vikramasinghe. Who will be the better president following the next presidential election? I have not election. said that I am in any of these You ask me now when I'm just, giving up. Just <laughs> if I'm giving up, I'm giving up. That's all. Right. So ask the others. If we, if and, we and exclude the That's names. not the only one. There are some others also. From the names I have given, if you are willing to answer. Oh, yeah. As you say, as soon as they say to give up, I will give up. <laughs> so no, I have only given my views on how the economy should be handled. And I feel that we have to have a 20-year plan and we all the major parties must agree on the basics. I mean, whatever the rows in India, the two parties will not move away from the economic uh, model. You can fight about the farmers. So like that, we, we, should, we should also agree on the economic model, what we are going to do. And that's what I have been saying. I, I don't think that you can just uh, sort this out in 24 hours or one year. What should be the government's immediate plan right now? Make up their mind to have a plan. Then talk to everyone else. Do you think support from the opposition would be given, given that they have a solid plan? If they have a solid plan, I think we should uh, support it. But then they must bring the plan out as, uh, you know, government ministers are saying they have no plan. Thank you so much, Mr. Vikramasinghe, for joining us this evening. <laughs>